Welcome back. In this step, let's learn about another important feature in Eclipse, all the Eclipse shortcuts. I think one of the most important thing that you should learn as a programmer is all the Eclipse shortcuts of the IDE you are going to use. If you are a professional programmer, then you'd be spending more than 70%, 80% of your time on the IDE. And all these keyboard shortcuts make you really, really productive. In this video, we'll take a quick look into the important shortcuts that are related to Eclipse. One of the important shortcuts that we would start off with is control space. Let's say I want to create a new instance of a big decimal class. So I'll type in big decimal. Now, I would want to be able to import that specific class. So how do I do that? I just press control space. I typed in big decimal. I'm pressing control space. There you go. Now, uh, Eclipse is suggesting me different options in the small drop down below. So I would want to use big decimal java.math. I would press enter now. You'd see that the big decimal class is directly imported. That's cool, right? So let's say now I after big decimal, I'm giving a space. I would want to create an instance of this. So I would make Eclipse suggest a name for it as well. So how do I do that? Control space. So just press control space here. And now Eclipse is also suggesting me a name for that specific variable. It's saying big decimal. Okay, I think that's good. So I'll use big decimal as the name. Uh, if you're new to Java, one of the conventions that we would be using typically is all class names start with a capital letter. All instance names start with a small letter. Other than that, we would use camel case. Big decimal, big decimal. Now I would want to create a new instance of this. So I'm typing is equal to new. And again, I'm using control space. So you'd see that it would bring up all the constructor options that are present inside big decimal. So how are you would be able to create this specific instance? It's bringing up all the big decimal constructor. So you can choose one among them. So let's say I wouldn't want to use a string, so big decimal. And now I can say 500.1 and save it. The shortcut which we are using until now is called control space. It saves you a lot of time and saves you a lot of keystrokes because all that I needed to do to import the big decimal class and use it was just type in big decimal. Uh, it's already imported, so this will not be. So big decimal java.math and then I would say big decimal two is equal to new and control space and you would see big decimal and let's say I would put a string value. That's isn't isn't that cool? One of the things that you need to forgive me for is the fact that I'm using 500.1 to create a big decimal that defeats the entire purpose of creating a big decimal. So do not worry about the real example. What we are trying to learn is control space. One more thing about Eclipse is that there are a few things called predefined templates. One of them which we used in the last step was main and also we use sysout. So I just press, I type in sysout and press control space, system.out.println. You can try in sysr, control space, system.r.println. If let's say I have, a, I want to loop around something, I want to use the for each. So you can say for each and then you can actually loop around the arguments. You can see that uh, Eclipse is by default even picking this value, I mean the name of this particular variable and it's trying to loop around that by default. So all that we needed to do was for E and control space. We already looked at how to use the main template in the last step. So main control space and you can actually generate the entire main method. So these are some of the templates which are predefined in Eclipse and you can use control space to use them. We looked at our first shortcut which is control space. Let's now move on to the next shortcut which is control one. Control one is one of my favorite shortcuts in Eclipse. So if let's say this class, I would want to rename it hello world, let's say new. Eclipse now shows an error because why? It says the public type hello new must match its much must be defined in its own file. The reason Eclipse is it's showing a compilation error is because the name of the file is hello world.java and the name of the class is hello world new. They don't match. You need to make them match. One of the things that you can do in this kind of context where you have a compilation error is present command one or control one. So command one or control one. 
So if you're on Mac, it's Command-1. If you are on Windows, it's Control-1. So just press Control-1 and you can see the options which are offered by Eclipse. It's saying rename compilation unit to Hello World New. Rename type to Hello World. So I can choose one of these options. I'll choose the first option, rename com compilation unit to Hello World New. I'll press Enter. And you'd see that the file is renamed to hello world new java. Let's say I want to go back. I'm pressing control one again and saying rename compilation unit to hello world java. So you'd see that the class name gets renamed. This is a simple example of how control one can make you really productive. Another example I can think of is just type in new integer. Let's say I'm, I want to create a new integer and now I'm pressing control one. It's saying, okay, there's nothing called new integer. You have to add another argument. So I'll go ahead and add an argument zero. Now, again, I'm pressing control one. You'd see that it's saying, okay, now you have created a, a instance of the integer. Do you want to assign it to a new, new local variable? So I can either choose it, choose to assign it to a new local variable. So I can press enter, then it creates a new local variable. Or if I press control one again, it says assign the other option it offers is to assign statement to a new field. I can choose that as well. Now it would create the entire field as well. So it's creating a field. I can just rename this. So I'll just call this number. So now it's creating a field in this specific class. You are inside a static method. If I was actually inside a normal method, let's say public uh, something, and I'm creating something in here. And let's say I create new integer of zero and press control one. Now assign statement to a new field, you can see that now it's creating a normal field. So if you are in a static method, it's creating a static variable. If you are actually inside method, normal method, which is not static, then it's creating a proper member variable. I can create, call this number two. So you can see that I can use control one to do a lot of magic. Control one and control space are my favorite shortcuts in Eclipse. If I want to fill up something, if I want to check something, then control space. If there's an error, I want to see what are the options that are present, then control one. So these are my favorite shortcuts in Eclipse. Other important shortcut in Eclipse is try control shift L. So control shift L actually brings up all the shortcuts which are present. So control shift L or command shift L. Control shift L, it brings up a list of shortcuts which are present in Eclipse. It's the complete list of shortcuts that are there in Eclipse. So if you are not sure, sure what is the shortcut for specific thing, then just press, just press Control Shift L and check all the shortcuts which are present in there. The other frequently used shortcuts, shortcut in Eclipse is Control Shift R. Control Shift R would be searching through all the files in the specific project. So in the workspace, what are all the pro files that are there? It would search through them. So I can type in hello world and you'd see that this particular file comes up. So if I want to go to a specific file, then the easiest way is to press control shift R and type in the name, and then you'd be able to find that particular file. The other option is control shift T. Control shift T is used to find classes. So let's say I want to find out hash map or I would want to find out collections class. So all that, you can search for using Control Shift T. Control Shift T is to search for a type. Type is a class. What I'm doing now is actually searching for hash map. And I press enter. What would happen is the class file would open up. Let's create an instance of hash map in here. So let's say map map is equal to new hash map. You'd see that there is a compilation error. What should you do? Control one, import. Again, I do a control one here, import. One of the important things is make sure that the, um, oops, I imported a wrong map. So let's do, fix that. So control one, import, not that, that one. I want to import java.util.map. So now you'd see that everything is fine. So I have a hash map. Now I want to see the code of hash map. How do I do that? So if I'm here and I would want to check the code of hash map, you can say function F3 and it would open the code of the specific method that you'd want to check. So if let's say I'm doing a map dot put something, put some key, doesn't matter, and some value, doesn't matter, 
and I want to see the code for this. I would just need to do the, press the function F3 key. It would take you to the specific method. If you want to see the code for a specific class or a specific method, all that you need to do is go to the class and just press function F3. The other thing you can do is to see the type hierarchy. So I want to see the inheritance relationship which HashMap uses. So I can say function F4. It brings up the entire hierarchy. So you can see that HashMap, abstract map object. So HashMap inherits from abstract map which inherited it from the object. It also shows the subclasses of HashMap as well. In this specific step, we looked at some of the important shortcuts in Eclipse. Control space, Control 1. We looked at Control Shift R to search for resources. So Control Shift T to search for types of classes. We used F3 to go through the declaration, whether it's a class, a method, or an interface. You can use F3 to look at the declaration of that specific thing. We used F4 to look at the type hierarchy. And the last one is Control shift l to be able to list down all the shortcuts that are present in Eclipse. As you get more experienced as a programmer, you should focus a lot more on getting productive with your IDE. Your IDE is something you'd be using a lot of times, I mean, almost 70% of your time. So I would recommend you to spend some time to get familiar with all the shortcuts. Good luck, and I would see you in the next step.